Congregation, please be seated. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant in the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. But a stream would rise from the earth, and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And a reading from Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out of by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley that was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and you will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophecy to the breath, prophecy mortal, and say to the, to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breathe, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as I, he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked in for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he took in his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. How do you breathe air into someone else? Many of you may have taken a CPR class, so you know the technical answer. But imagine someone who has never heard of that technique, seeing someone seeing it for the first time. To them, it might look like a kiss. Humanity's creation was a moment of incredible tenderness, incredible intimacy, incredible love. Our life is a gift from a God who stoops to kiss us to life through the Holy Spirit. This is particularly good news. Ezekiel reminds us when we feel like all hope is gone and we are nothing but dry bones, when all the institutions and relationships that have protected us or given life meaning have been destroyed, when all our dreams have come crashing down and all our efforts to revive them ourselves have failed. It is then that the prophet tells us what he told Israel. It is the spirit that fills us with life-giving breath. In case you missed scripture's point, John, who doesn't seem to know about Luke's Pentecost account, but does know about the gift of the Spirit, tells us twice that the resurrected Christ appeared to and breathed on his disciples. Is that like blowing kisses? That is all it took for them to be given the gift of the Spirit. It is enough. So breathe easy. You have been brought back to life. A reading from John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. 
so it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like of the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. The scriptures also picture God's spirit as wind. The image conveys something of the sovereignty and mystery of God's presence in our world. We do not know where it comes from or where it goes, but there is no mistaking its reality and power. Think wind farms, think hurricanes and tornadoes, think a warm spring breeze after a hard winter. Real. Powerful. By this power, God changes the course of history and the church is born. By this power, God will alter the landscape of the earth to reflect divine design and purpose. By this power, God causes the ship that is the church to sail out of the harbor in search of distant shores. Thank you. 
carrying her axe. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue that rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. The image of God's presence as fire is found throughout the pages of Scripture. The image vividly portrays God's holy presence, a consuming, refining, illuminating presence. All these facets are present in the image of the Holy Spirit's descent on the disciples at Pentecost. Another common reference to fire in the pages of Scripture is the role fire plays in taking sacrifice and delivering it to God. Here, too, it fits what happened at Pentecost. Cleansed by the work of Christ, we have become living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. Let us burn with holy fire. <coughs> subsided, the fountains of the deep and the windows of the heavens were closed, 
The rain from the heavens was restrained, and the waters gradually receded from the earth. At the end of 150 days, the waters had abated, and in the seventh month, on the seventh day of the month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. The waters continued to abate until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains appeared. At the end of 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he made and sent out the raven. And it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. The dove found no place to set its foot, and it returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still in the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took it and brought it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent out the dove, and it did not return to him anymore. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him, and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the foot of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chafe he will burn with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is, it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented, and when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, Suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, beloved, with whom I am well pleased. One final image. After the flood of judgment, a dove brings Noah a sign of new creation, an olive branch. It's a sign that judgment will not be the final word. God makes a place for us again, and God makes a promise never again. He hangs the bow of judgment in the sky like a gunslinger hanging up his six-shooter. A dove descends on Christ as his ministry begins. It, too, is a sign of new creation and of judgment not being the final word. Because Christ has come in our flesh and stands in the place of sinners, judgment will not be the last word. Instead, by grace, there will be a new creation, a place for sinners like you and me and God's newly cleansed world. It is the Spirit, in the form of a dove, that brings us this good news. So rejoice this Pentecost day. Rejoice in this sign of God's grace, for we are a new creation.